Hello everyone, it's good to see you all back. With next season literally around the corner from us, I thought it would be great to introduce a stasis prismatic build that would be handy for taking on the unknown in the incoming season. We will be using Osiomancy and Winter's Bite, which many of you may be asking, what? But from experimenting, you'll be able to lock down everything in your path with just stasis turrets and a big ball of ice. If you like add control builds that can weaken targets, cause large shatter damage, deal additional damage over time, be great against bosses, and auto load your weapon as we freeze things, then let me provide you with a weird and wonderful setup. So starting with the general aim and the of the build, our aim is to provide a prismatic stasis build that can be used for this season and the next, with ease of use and instant freeze being applied. For this, we will be using Osiomancy Gloves and Winter's Bite. Let's start with our exotic armor, Osiomancy Gloves, with its exotic effect, Fervid Cold Snap. It states, Your Cold Snap grenades have an additional charge that recharges quicker on direct impact. The Seeker spawned from Cold Snap grenades travel further. Our build will be designed around the high uses of stasis turrets being available and uses Winter's Bite to freeze all sorts of targets at once. With stasis turrets on hand, we can deal with multiple threats at once while also having a heavy on hand that can be used to instant freeze targets as a last resort or generally need to quickly get rid of enemies over time. This build can be used without Ozzyman's gloves if you wish, as having just the one turret is fine to work with as well. In fact, having an exotic class bond with Itmost Light or even Nesvac Sin is good enough. However, I would advise you to have two stasis turrets instead as two are better than one. Our second exotic is the Winter's Bite with its exotic effect, Big Frigid Glaive, which states, It fires a large ball of energy that locks onto nearby targets and freezes them. Now, you may be asking why I chose this exotic compared to just picking up a stasis weapon with Chill Clip instead. And the answer to that is its projectile attack. A Winter's Bite projectile has the ability to not only freeze targets it interacts with, but can also travel quite a while doing so. Since our build is focusing on freezing enemies at all ranges, adding Winter's Bite feels like the best choice to pick with how effective it is. Now, I won't be using the melee option on the Glaive because of the risk of enemies killing me at close quarters, but I have found that adding a Stasis Holster mod to the build will allow me to spam my weapon projectiles more often when generally swapping in and out. Now, this might not convince you with giving it a go, but do remember, it's always nice to mix up your playstyle and use weapons that not everyone tends to use. You'll generally be surprised with how effective our heavy is in the end game. For aspects and fragments, we have the following. A Feed the Void, where defeating targets with an ability will grant you Devour. A Bleak Watcher, where converting your grenades will turn them into stasis turrets that will slow and freeze targets. A Faster Solitude, where rapid positioning hits will weaken enemies' damage. A faster command where freezing or suppressing targets will reload your equipped weapons and increase weapon stability, aim assist, and airborne effectiveness. A faster devotion where defeating targets inflicted with stasis or strand debuffs grants bonus light transcendence energy. A faster balance where rapidly defeating targets with light abilities grants melee energy. Rapidly defeating targets with dark abilities grants grenade energy. And faster of ruin which will increase the size and damage of the burst when you shatter a stasis crystal or frozen target. It will also increase the AoE effect of solar ignitions. With the introduction of Osiomancy and Winter Bite to the build, you're going to want to have Faso Command, Devotion and Ruin for covering the large-scale stasis aspect of the build. Now each one will be benefiting us from increasing damage, auto loading our weapons, or simply making it easier to gather light transcendence energy over time. I won't be using the status super this time, as the last time I did that, not everyone agreed it was the best choice of action, so instead, we will be using Song of Flame like normal. Now, this build can be done in the status subclass specifically if you wish, but you will be missing out on the flexibility of fragments. Arcane Needles are great for additional damage, while Solitude will be reducing enemies' damage, which basically means we can survive longer. Arcane Needles are great for additional damage, while Solitude will be reducing enemies' damage, which basically means we can survive for longer. A balance is always a great fragment to have on hand, and being able to use our transcendent state as a secondary form of damage is always going to be better than what the status subclass offers. Of course, this will be down to the players, but Prismatic just offers more for less. 
For the modern stats, we are both resilience and discipline marked with the highest priorities for the build. Strength is also being supported here. Resilience, we have ours at tier 10 for a 30% damage reduction. We have added the Concussive Dampner mod for the reduced AoE splash damage done to us, and the Sustained Fire mod for the increased damage reduction when using our AR. No faster protection is needed this time, since the build is quite good with add control via stasis. We can also use our glaciers created as a temporary cover if need be. In discipline, we have ours at tier 10 for a 1 minute 1 second cooldown via cold snap grenades. Cold snap is required for the build to work with all fancy gloves, although this can still be done with our aspect alone. If you go this path, you will need to swap your exotic out. Now, just like storm grenades, its base form is good for add control, but turning our grenades into turrets is where the build will focus on the most. Having this cooldown with Feed the Void should be enough to balance out how many turrets you use in the instance, as long as you're not spamming them. Now, this brings us to the additional mods which are recommended for buffing our key stats as well. Impact Induction times 1 for a 12% grenade buff, Momentum Transfer times 2 for a 17% melee buff, and Distribution for a 4% all ability buff will cover the key areas for the build. You can also have the times 2 impact induction instead if you want to fully invest into your grenades more. Additional mods, we have the following. Special ammo finder for increasing the chance of special ammo dropping. Heavy ammo finder, reserves and scavenger mods for a heavy weapon. A stasis siphon for creating all the power via stasis weapon type. Charged up times 1 for increasing the maximum stack of armor charges by plus 1. A stasis weapon surge times 1 for a 10% stasis weapon buff. Status holster for all to load in status weapons when put away, and time dilation for reducing the decay time for armor charges. As we have covered our exotic heavy weapon, I will then advise you to pick some super weapons for the build. What I recommend are all optional, so please keep this in mind. Our primary will be the Veiled Threat AR with Shoot Loot and Headstone. This newly introduced AR is generally great for its frame type and its ability to be customized to your own liking. Ideally, the AR will be the main bread and butter of the build while also being supported by key seasonal mods and fragments. For this, I advise you to get what is shown, as they build into our setup pretty flexible. For example, a shoot to loot is great when we need special to heavy ammo or need all the light for our surge mods on the fly. Headstone now is mixing in well for the build and will be triggering key fragments such as Fast of Ruin and Command. I have also added the sustained fire and targeting auto loading mods to our AR, so you'll see just how much of a workhorse the weapon can become over time. As secondary, we have the Izumi RR4 Adept with lead from gold and vulva weapon. This will be covering boss damage and breaking barriers, and quite honestly, this has worked out pretty well for me in endgame. The two perk combos are ideal for the long term effect of dealing with multiple high end hostile enemies at once, while also pairing well with our shoot to loot AR. It covers multiple areas pretty well, and is generally an easy weapon to get via Zavala for all. Now, the highlight of the build showcases just how simple and powerful a stasis prismatic build can be just for anyone involved. This build requires only you have the Osimantic Gloves on hand, and from here, you can build surplus traits to how you like, or as shown. But since we are doing a build, it's best we explore and try out setups for the ultimate loadout over time. One of the key components of making this build work is the status turrets and winter's bite freeze effect that, once active, can lock down an entire area with little effort. How you go about this is down to you, but I found that I can single handedly take on a bunch of minor, major, and mini bosses, plus all on my own, with devastating effect. What makes this unique is that not only am I using these seasonal mods such as Creeping Chill for the extra bonus, Sustained Fire, and Targeting Lock to maximize my weapon's effect strength, but also, you don't actually need to use them at all. Which means when next season does come around, this build can be easily replicated with little change involved. And maybe that's something you might be after. A prismatic stasis build that can be used in a new higher end game content and new dungeon that is literally just around the corner, while also being something that can be used in PvP content as well. This build can be done by everyone, even if you don't have the same weapons and mods like I do. So to recap, we have shown a powerful stasis build that's great for freezing everything in our path and making everyone's life a lot more safe and ending content. It's recommended for content that is designed for group play, 
but I believe this build will be more useful in GMs and dungeon environments to where you need to stand your ground against a hall of enemies. So there we have it, I hope you all enjoyed the build. So there we have it, I hope you all enjoyed the build breakdown. If you have any thoughts on content shared then please leave a comment below, while if you enjoyed the content and want more of these videos then leave a like and sub while you are here. The link for the build is located below in the pin section and I do advise you to check out my playlist for more. It was great sharing today's video with you all and I hope to see you again soon.